This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. Number one best-selling author of the book Paycheck to Purpose and Ramsey Personality and host of The Ken Coleman Show. Ken Coleman, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. This is The Ramsey Show. We help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create amazing actual relationships. Todd is with us. Todd is in Mesa, Arizona. Hi, Todd. Welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. Hey, Ken. Uh, just calling up to... Uh see if I should uh, prolong my uh, education to take advantage of my employer's uh, tuition reimbursement program. Uh, The uh, total cost of this uh, program is going to be $30,000. But the the one caveat is my employer, they they only reimburse uh, up to $10,000 a year. And I would prefer to just rip this Band-Aid off and get the, the program done within two years, so that'd be uh, $15,000 a year, uh, leaving me responsible to cover five, approximately $5,000. Um, do, do you have that cash oh, on hand where you could cover it? We do. Uh, currently, uh, my wife and I, were were saving up for a down payment on hopefully our, our first home. Good. What are you studying? Uh, This is going to be a a master's of engineering for mine engineering. Mm -hmm. What does it do to your income when you get that? Uh, The ROI on it would be pretty great. Uh, I think it would pretty much boost it about 30 grand in one year. That kind of answers the question, doesn't it? Like if you got it a year sooner, you'd get the 30 grand a year sooner, and you're only paying 10 grand to do that? (laughs) Yeah. Yes, it, it was, you know. Wait a minute. No, stop. Stop. Let me make sure I didn't miss something, okay? If you get it in two years, you get an, a thirty grand raise in the third year that you wouldn't get uh, into if you hadn't finished, right? Okay. Yep. And to do that, you have to come out of pocket with ten grand. Five each year. Yep. Which you have. I'm trading ten for thirty. Good trade. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I like it when you frame it like that. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm and, just kind of being a cheapskate. <laughs> yes, but remember, no, Todd. Yeah, you're cutting your <laughs> nose off spite your face, though, buddy. Yeah, and Todd, yeah. you're the one that said just moments ago, I want to rip the Band-Aid off and get it done. And, oh, uh, yeah. And so the math supports your desire. How so this a, is a no-brainer. How big a company is this? It, they're multinational uh, mining giant. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> I know where this is going. Because <laughs> you know what they need? They need what you do really bad. And you're a fairly rare bird. That That is true. Okay. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is walk into my supervisor and go, dude, y'all need to up it. Yeah. In my, I need a little waiver. I need a little amendment mm-hmm. to the uh, big corporate giant stupid butt policy. And y'all need to pay 15 a year for mine. Uh, that way I'm helping you at ad- adding value to your organization, our organization at a faster pace. Um, and I'll even sign something that says if I, le- if I leave before the end of the third year, when you would have given me the money anyway, I'll pay it back. Yeah. I love that, Dave. I love All it. Right. Cause hey, 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 listen, that's not going to offend them. You have no risk in that conversation. As long as you keep that posture of just, hey, here's an idea. Here's a thought. Here's what the rules say. I can knock this out in two. Would you guys consider that? That's not going to be negative. Even if they say, well, we're not going to do it, you're not going to hurt yourself. Yeah. But, I mean, they, you know, listen, you, just t- talk to your supervisor. Listen, how hard are you guys out there recruiting people mm-hmm. for this exact role right now? And I'm willing to step into that role a year sooner, but I need a waiver 
and I'm even willing to guarantee you a zero risk on it because if I leave early, I would pay it back. That that's like even you might even get corporate America to think about that. <laughs> Dave, I don't know. That makes that's, too much that's, sense. Yeah, we're trying to get brain cells to work here. But yeah, yeah, that's that's a cool thing. Either way, you're doing it. Even if you come out of pocket with it, you're doing it. That's correct. Because a 10, 10 trading for 30 is a good trade. Yeah. This is, I want to do it or I'm going to regret. You will regret it on some level. Yeah. Short-term regret, yeah. but why? You don't need to. You got the money. And here's the other thing. You'll make up that 10 grand faster for that house payment anyway. Dave just played the math out for you. So this doesn't hurt the dream in any way of buying the house. It, yeah. Your, your instinct towards the Band-Aid was the correct instinct. And uh, the, the neat thing about someone that's got this much engineering under their belt is that math is their second language anyway. So he already felt the math. He just hadn't done it the way I did it. So you can, they just, it's down in the DNA. It's swirling around. He's going, I know this is right. I just can't figure out why it's right. So, all right. Claire is with us. Claire's in Nashville. Hi, Claire. How are you? Hi, Dave. Super excited to talk to you today. You too. How can we help? Yeah, so I just accepted a job with a new company, and I'm very excited about it. But I did realize that this company doesn't offer a 401k match. They have a 401k, um, just no match. Mm -hmm. So my question for you is, should I participate in this 401k, or should I just open up a Roth IRA? What do you think? Well, once you're out, does the 401k offer Roth? Um, It's a traditional. Only. Is that what you're saying? Only. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, you would do a Roth IRA first. Here's the math. The math says take all the match first. You don't have that. Roth is better than traditional, so you max out your Roth before you do any traditional. And then if that doesn't get you to your 15% in baby step four, um, then you would do some in traditional. But Roth is better than traditional. Match is better than Roth. And so Roth beats I mean, match beats Roth beats traditional. And the best of all worlds is a match with a Roth, obviously, but you don't have that. So, uh, and of course, you're not doing any of this if you're not at baby step four and you don't have your emergency fund in place and you're not debt free other than your house, right? Right. I am already in baby step four. Perfect. You're rocking it, girl. Well, I will add to that. My current employer now, so this is a new position I'm accepting, but my current employer, I have been contributing to the 401k with them because they had a match. So that should just roll over into uh, another 401k? Or it, should no, you. I would just roll or? it to a traditional IRA. Okay. IRA. And you pick some mutual okay. funds. So what you need to do is you need to jump on RamseySolutions.com, click Smart Vester Pro, find some of the folks there in your area that we recommend for investing. We're not in the investing business, but these are people. You're in Nashville. It's probably the same people I use, you know. And so um, you're going to sit down, get a Roth IRA going, and do a direct transfer Roll over to a traditional IRA from the old 401k, and you'll have no taxes on that if you do the direct transfer. And that's what you should do. So, hey, good question. Congratulations on the new job. This is The Ramsey Show. serving Christian Health Cost Sharing Ministry, CHM has shared medical expenses for its members since 1981. We believe you should have the freedom to focus on your health while being supported by a community of believers, giving you the opportunity to create many more firsts.
Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host. We were just talking off air about how excited we are. We're leaving in the morning to uh, come to Las Vegas. Those of you in Las Vegas, we're doing a Building Wealth live event tomorrow night. The uh, It's located at Central Church there. If you haven't reserved your seats, you can still get them. It's going to be an action-packed night. Ken Coleman, Dr. John Deloney, Rachel Cruz, George Campbell, and me. We're going to be talking about what is going on. What in the world is going on? What is going on in the world? Mm. And all about building wealth and all about the inflation stuff that's going on. There's a lot of craziness out there, folks, and it's affecting how people are thinking about their money, and and therefore it's affecting how some people are doing with their money. But you're going to walk away calm. Yeah. Deliberate plan. We're going to show you what to do, why to do it, logical, exactly what's going on. And uh, you will do what we always do around Ramsey. We're going to increase your hope. It's what we do. So uh, come on out. Las Vegas Building Wealth live event Thursday night, tomorrow night. And uh, and, and we'd love to have you. It's that simple. Orlando, we're going to be there in two weeks on the 19th. And we're re- from tomorrow. We're excited about that. Uh, we've got the Entree Leadership Summit the following week there in Orlando. I think there's like five tickets available for that. That's basically sold out. But the uh, Building Wealth event in both of these cases is up over 2,000 tickets sold, approaching 3,000 tickets sold. Thank you for that, Orlando. Thank you for that, Las Vegas. But there are still seats available in both of these venues. Uh, we don't have a need to declare a sellout because we don't hype stuff uh, when there's still seats. If there's two seats left, we'll tell you. So come. You know, we want yeah. you, we want to get as many people in there as we can because we want to help people. That's what we do. $25 for a f- ticket, or you can get a four-pack for only $60. So you you and your wife, you and your husband get a, t- get a pair of tickets for your friends. And all four of you come. Make a night of it. It'll be a blast. We'll be signing books, answering questions. And uh, Dr. Deloney and King Coleman will be hosting a free bonus section about work and relationships before the main event yeah. in each of these. And oh, so you don't want to miss that. I want to point out, we are trying to get permission from the church to see if we can bring a tiger on the stage. So that's an extra bonus for that. Because it's Vegas, we thought, let's try to get a tiger. We haven't run that by you. This I'm hitting you with this now, but it's a pre-show bonus. A little hype after you said we don't hype things. Yeah. Dr. Yeah. John Deloney and I and a tiger in Vegas, come on. Last guy that did that it didn't work <laughs> out for him. I'm just saying. There's another guy who tried that, okay? And um, I thought I thought I'd spring that one on. You. Yeah. No it, pun intended. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm 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 seldom folks, speechless, but I am now. No, folks, okay. every once in a while, I've I like got to have this a little visual. I've Dave. got this visual of this kitty walking off with Ken and his jaws. Okay. <laughs> and so I'm just I'm trying, to, I'm trying to clear. That's my worth head a ticket right, right there. Yeah. So that that's worth that's worth twenty five dollars. I'm just <laughs> easy, easy. It's a deal of the century. It right is there. right there. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Thank you for joining us. All right. You get tickets at RamseySolutions.com <laughs> slash events. Um, and you can come see Tiger King. There you go. I got it, folks. <laughs> Tiger this King. Is, this is great. Ken Coleman's new nickname, <laughs> Tiger King. All right. All right. Just wow. We knew I, know. We, I knew you were going to be a big hit someday, Ken. I just didn't know why. <laughs> Erica, Erica's in Des Moines. Hey, Erica, what's up? <laughs> Hi, guys. Um, thank you for taking my call. You bet. You're welcome. How can we help? <laughs> Hi. So I am a 23-year-old. I am on Baby Step 3B slash 4, and I am graduating with my master's in accounting this weekend. Awesome. And Congratulations. Question, thank you. Um, I had a question about finding um, finding a job in uh, a field that aligns with what my education is, uh, what my master's education is, or finding a job um, that aligns more with what my undergrad is, because my undergrad is in one of Dave's famous left-handed puppetry um, degrees. <laughs> what is it? you got to tell us now. Um, it's uh, Western Equestrian Studies and Equine Business Management, so oh. horse training, basically. Ah. Oh. Well, that's not left-handed puppetry. I mean, we're talking about big business there. It's pretty nuanced, but yeah. 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 Okay, so when somebody presents a question. people that have actual jobs doing that. Oh, yeah. And that's a big, big industry. So undergrad versus MBA, what to do? And and I'm I'm questioning, is is there a little bit more desire and excitement related to either the undergrad or the master's? Or are they equally just, eh? 
Um, you know, I love being outside and, you know, not working the nine to five desk job. That kind of scares me. Mm -hmm. Um, but just being able to kind of have a schedule that, you know, I don't have to necessarily answer to anybody. Um, and, you know, working outside, helping people with their horses, helping people. Why would you not have to answer to anybody? If you're working for a company, they're going to expect you to produce crap. Yeah. But not answering, like, you know, working with the horses, I wouldn't necessarily, I could be my own boss, necessarily. Yeah, so that's what you want to do. You want to work with horses, yes? You want to start your own business. Yeah. That's a different equation. Right. Okay, third third variable to the conversation. Okay. But horses is where you want to go, correct? Yeah. Okay, so why did you get an MBA? You must have thought, this is going to help me somehow, some way. What did you think the benefit was? Because I see a lot of people in the industry that, um, like, I see a lot of potential to improve and help people improve their business tactics in the industry because a lot of people, you know, get the reputation for being dumb horse people that don't know how to run a business. Okay. See, I don't think this is an either or. I think it's both and. I think you get into the field, you start working with horses in whichever way you wanted to, and now you're getting real life experience and you're not only just getting experience, but you're getting perspective. You working for somebody and in the horse business, and you're not just taking care of a horse in a certain way as it relates to your job description, but your, your head's on a swivel. You're asking the person you work for, your leader, the owner, all kinds of questions about the business. Why do you do this? Could you do this better? You become a student while you're a worker and then with that MBA and that training of business training you grow yourself into your own company eventually so I think it's both and okay based on what you said okay thanks. now I, I will give you yeah. one guardrail on that okay that is not saying take a job for ten dollars an hour shoveling out the stables right when you could have made 85 yeah. grand as an accountant yeah with this yeah I've, I've been there <laughs> yeah so i mean i need you to step into a, a, a middle management you know business oriented good sized organization making some good money in the horse world even if you're not making quite yeah. what you could make doing accounting with the game plan of going up but this idea that you know i have to you know, I have to wax the saddles and uh, whatever else in order for five years in order to be. Qu- no. Well, no, 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 no I'm no. not saying that. No, I'm just saying don't do that. Yeah, not at all. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I tried that, and that's not no. <laughs> yeah, we we don't need you to turn into an intern mm. with a master's degree. You, that's not necessary. Okay. Yeah. So get if you, but yeah, there's no reason to not the the horse world, as you know, and and you know it better than I do, Erica. But I know enough to be dangerous. It ranges everything from a two hundred and fifty dollar used Chevy pickup to a Bentley. Yeah. And so you know you want to be over on the Bentley side working on this stuff. You you don't need to be trying to get some guy who's got three hay seeds to make money with them. Yeah. Okay. So get get where somebody's dealing with some expensive horse flesh mm-hmm. and there's some money flying around this thing and, you know, that way they can pay you because there's going to have to be some flex there. So if you're dealing with cheap horses, the employees are going to be cheap. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. And so and horses like everything else or most everything else, there's a tremendous spectrum uh, on what people spend for them. So, good stuff. Good luck with that, kiddo. Sounds like a lot of fun. Sounds like you got a great adventure ahead of you. This is The Ramsey Show.
If you're looking for ways to update your home without blowing the budget, I've got it. For years, I've been telling you about our friends at Blinds.com. Blinds.com makes it simple to shop top quality blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping. With Blinds.com, there's no need to renovate your entire home. Just change out what's on your windows with upscale choices like faux wood blinds, cellular, and roller shades or even outdoor shades. Plus, Blinds.com guarantees the perfect fit. Whether you do it yourself or you have them measure and install everything for you. Shop their latest looks and see how much you can save at Blinds.com today. The easy and affordable way to make your home more beautiful is Blinds.com. personality is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Kevin and Alyssa are with us. Hey guys, how are you? We're doing fabulous, Dave. How are you? Better than we deserve. Welcome to Nashville. Where do you live? We live in Sullivan, Indiana. It's a very small rural community. Near what? Near Terre Haute. Okay, that'll work. Well, welcome. Good to have you guys. How much debt have you paid off? We paid off $72,000 and we cash flowed 18000 of that uh, towards my master's degree. Good for you. And your range of income, or, or how long did that take you? It took us 26 months. Good. And your range of income during that two years? Range of income was started at 90000 mm -hmm. and we today we're at 152. Wow. Nice. nice jump. What do you all do for a living? Well, I'm a history teacher for mm -hmm. a high school called mm -hmm. Duggar Union Community Schools. Cool. And I'm also in the Indiana Air National Guard. Great. Your master's in history? It is in history, Excellent. yes. Excellent. Good. Okay. And I work full-time as a federal employee, mm -hmm. and I work uh, part-time as an elected official on my local school board. Mm -hmm. wow. Just to clarify, a different school board than Elisa, uh, so there's no nepotism there. Oh, I don't know. I thought, I thought, I thought you were setting up job security <laughs> for the history teacher here. I don't know, man. This is a, yeah, we can lay off everybody, but that particular history teacher, yeah. 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 Uh, Very good, guys. Very good. Cool. So what kind of debt was this, 72000 Well, Dave, we're a little weird. We paid off our mortgage. Whoa! Oh, you're more than a little weird. You're actually very weird. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. How old are you guys? I'm 31. I'm 35. And you have a paid-for house? Yes. That makes you weird right there. I'm just What's the house worth? Uh, in today's market, it's about 200000 nice. <laughs> I love it. How does it feel to not have a payment in the world in your 30s? Free. Very free. free. Yeah, that's pretty incredible. Wow. I mean, most people never even think about paying off their mortgage, and you guys do it in your early 30s. What in the world inspired all of this? Well, about 26 months ago, we happened to be looking at our amortization schedule. I got that right here. Yep. Happened to have it. Ha yeah, ha just happened to have our amortization schedule. <laughs> and we were looking at our mortgage payment, and we realized how much we were paying to the bank in interest. Mm -hmm. um, over half of our mortgage payment every single month was going to interest and very little was actually going towards the principal. Yeah. And so that upset us because we were just basically throwing money at the bank. And so, you know, it's amazing. There's a couple of times people really get upset about math. One of them is the first time you ever get a paycheck and they hold taxes out mm -hmm. and you go, what? And the second time is when you figure out how bankers make money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. We were definitely giving the bankers a lot of money. And so we decided we're not doing that anymore. Let's pay off our mortgage and get this done and I over with. I love it. Wow. Boom. How'd you get introduced to Ramsey? Well, Dave, we've been following the baby steps for years. Uh, been following, I've called on the Ken Coleman show, uh, show twice. Wow. So we love you guys. Uh, we're big fans. So we followed the baby steps from step one all the way to now we're on step seven. So yeah, we, we've paid off all the non-consumer debt and, or the non-mortgage debt. And that was $77,000 actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got to the point to pay off the mortgage. And we, that's when we uh, just tackled it. You just looked down and went, I only got two years I can be done. Yeah. And, and, and actually, David, uh, 
it was supposed to be four years. That was our goal. Uh-huh. Um, so kind of to skip ahead just a little bit. Um, so we set a goal, uh, 26 months ago, ago uh, as a God goal to say, you know, how can we pay this mortgage off in four years? Uh-huh. And we said, mathematically, it can't happen. Uh, uh-huh. We just don't have the income. Uh, but we had faith and we had the faith that the Lord, the Lord would provide for us. Uh-huh. And uh, we just put our heads down and we're grinding. And um, a friend of ours has a good quote, when you live in the kingdom, you can't lose. And so our, our number one th- uh, piece of advice and our thing here is get into the kingdom. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And the Lord provided. And whether it was stimulus money that we would get, we didn't need it, but we took it and we just uh, put it right towards a mortgage. And uh, we just kept on... Um, th- we were, we were blessed so much and we just continued to be blessed because, uh, um, it allowed us to pay it off, not in four years, but in 26 months. Yeah. I, I can't prove it theologically or biblically, but just observation for 30 years, I swear, I think God is standing around waiting on someone to start behaving, you know, and start going, Oh, oh there's two that actually get it. I can give them some money. <laughs> they're, they are worthy of trust. They are trustworthy. Oh, there, the, the, look at those two. I can give them some money. And, and, and I can give them a chance to go make some more money because you're not afraid of work, you know? And so, because we know that God provides for the birds, but he does not throw the worms in the nest. Right. Uh, they leave the nest, go get the worms out of the ground. And that's what you've been doing. You've been working. But God gave you open doors, gave you options, ways to do it uh, so that you could prosper. That's strong, man. I love that. Thank you. Good job, you guys. Yeah, yeah. I, first, real quick question. Favorite period of history? I would probably have to say World War II is one of my favorites. Okay, cool. I just had to ask. Uh, (laughs) So when you guys decided, you'd already paid off debt previously, and now you go, okay, we get after the home. And so I'm just curious, having gone through the first part of that, now coming after the home, what did you take from the first part of that journey of the consumer debt and all this other stuff, and how did it inform this journey, make you a little bit more effective? I'm just curious what you learned and then what you put into play as a result. Yeah, great question, Ken. So uh, the first the first part, we, we learned about the journey in and itself. So when you set a big goal, um, when you're on that journey, it, it's the process of that journey that shapes you and shifts you and makes you a, a more refined person. It, you start building better daily habits. You start building better financial habits, healthy uh, eating habits. And so we just took those principles in, in the first uh, few baby steps and then applied them to this baby step. And, and it's like this snowball, it got rolling and we couldn't stop it. And um, what, yeah, we were just so blessed with, with that. Um, we just continued to work hard and uh, followed the principles. You guys talk about them all the time and we just put them into practice. That's great. Yeah. Way to go, you guys. Very well done. Favorite period in history, I'm going to guess. Founding of the nation. You know that. Revolutionary, Revolutionary War period. War. Yeah. Right. Yeah, he's a history nut. Okay. So, which is fun to travel with if you're touring, <laughs> if you're touring cities like Boston, right? So, um, yeah, he knows more than the stupid travel travel guide or whatever the guy was walking around. Remember that guy? Yeah. I'll never forget. Yeah, that was interesting. So, hey, way to go, you guys. Yeah. What do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? Yeah, the key is, uh, number one, get into the kingdom. Uh, yeah. Number two, um, set big goals. Goals so big, they scare you. Mm. And because when you're on that journey, that's when you, you start becoming right. a better person and learning. Right. Um, we would also say, uh, you're going to face adversity. Uh, there's no question. It's Murphy's going to hit you, mm-hmm. uh, or you're going to fail. You're going to make bad decisions, but you just never give up. Um, what was the biggest uh, adversity you had to leap over in this 26 months? 26 months, the biggest piece of adversity. Um, um, probably be our vehicles. Yeah. Um, well, our vehicles are 10 and 12 years old. Mm-hmm. Uh, they constantly break down. There's um, adversity sitting in your driveway. Yes, <laughs> every single day. And actually, we just got one of our vehicles back out of the shop. We had to get a alternator replaced. And, oh, you know, it's things. like we could have very easily went and bought a brand new vehicle. But... I mean, it is time for you to move up in car now. Okay. I mean, you can wait, you can wait all these used car prices come down a little yeah, bit. But that's right. You guys need some cars. Way to go, you guys. You're amazing. Well done. Very well done. We got a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires for you. That's for sure your next chapter in this story. Very well done. And also a copy of the Total, total Money Makeover for you to give away and get someone else started on the process. Bring the kids up and give us their names and ages. This is Arian. She's nine years old. Mm -hmm. This is Amira. She's seven years Mm -hmm. old. This is Kansas. She's six years old. Mm -hmm. And this is Kylie. She's 15 years old. All right. Very cool. (laughs) Very cool. Well done. 
Uh, so, Dad, I believe the ladies have ganged up on you in this family. <laughs> wow. Absolutely. Well done. Very well done. All right, Kevin and Alyssa, Kylie, Arian, 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 Arian. I'm sorry, Amira, Amira. Amira. I can't do any Amira. of it. And Kansas, I'm messing it all up. Uh, from Indiana, <laughs> seventy-two thousand dollars paid off in twenty-six months, making ninety to one fifty-two. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. You ready, ladies? Thank you for changing, changing our, our family, family tree, tree, Dave. Three, two, one. We're, We're debt-free. Debt free. shirts say straight out of debt for those of you listening on the radio i love it this is the ramsey show Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, best-selling author, and host of The Ken Coleman Show is my co-host today as we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual real relationships. Caitlin is with us. Caitlin's in Memphis. Hi, Caitlin. Welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hey, David and Ken. How are you guys? Good. What's up? Great. So I'm 23 years old. I just graduated with my master's on April 30th. Congratulations. And yeah. what? awesome. Thank you. And cybersecurity. Ooh, wow. Cha-ching. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you hear you. that sound? So, that, you uh, hear that printing press sound in the background, <laughs> folks? That's money. <laughs> yeah, she knows it, too. That's the laugh of, oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Good for you. So, thank you. So, my mother um, informed me that um, she has zero save for retirement and expects me to take care of her during her retirement years. Ooh. Um, obviously I don't want to abandon my mother. So how can I best prepare myself to take care of her when that time comes? You're 23. How old is your yes, mother? Sir. She is 46, sir. Okay. So what part of her childhood trauma has damaged her psychologically to make this ridiculous butt statement? That I am not sure. Sure. Do you um, do you agree that that's absolutely ludicrous for a forty six year old to put on a twenty three year old that you're going to have to take care of me someday when you've got twenty more years to work you ought to be taking care of yourself. When you put it that way, sure. Um, but I do love my mother. It's not a question of loving your mother. It's not a question of honoring your mother. Your mother's misbehaving. Yes, Does she work now? Does she have any type of career or job, or is there some type of uh, challenge she's dealing with that makes her put this on you? What's what's the backstory? She does work. Um, she's a secretary and making around thirty k a year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I just think it's a it's a matter of um, not knowing how to get to. So she hasn't saved up to this point. I think it's a matter of not knowing when it's how to start mm -hmm. or. You know, that type of thing. Well, is this a flippant comment, or you think she seriously expects you to just t to write her checks when she retires because she's worked her whole life and didn't bother? I think it's 100% serious, sir. Okay. All right. Well, there's two or three issues going on. Okay. Issue number one is the answer to your question is how do you help anyone financially? You first have to put your own oxygen mask on, meaning that you can't help people if you're broke, so you need to be become wealthy. And you're going to do that. You're going to be making a lot of money, and you're going to follow the baby steps that we teach, and you're going to stay out of debt, and you're going to invest and save, and you're going to be a multimillionaire uh, by the time you're 40, okay? And so you'll be able to write her checks. That does not mean you should, but mathematically, you would be able to if you followed that. Do you agree with that? Yes, sir. Okay. Then the next part of the question for me is, um, how do we honor the office of motherhood 
In other words, the Bible says, honor your father and mother. It does not say buy them cocaine if they are a cocaine addict. That is not honoring them. And so we don't, it, the Bible's not suggesting that by honoring your parents, you participate in their misbehavior. And for a 46-year-old to plan on retiring broke and be taken care of by their children is misbehavior in the American culture. Now, in some cultures, it would not be. But in, in North America, in Memphis, Tennessee, that's misbehavior. You follow me? Yes, sir. So how can we help mom when mom is engaged in misbehavior, behavior that's inappropriate. Uh, and so what I would do is this, I, I would say, Hey mom, I'm going to go through this class because I'm going to start making a lot of money called financial peace university to learn how to handle money. And man, I really want you to go with me. Would you go with me, mom? Uh -huh. And I'll pay for it. And let's get her in this class and teach her how to handle money. And let's get her believing, having some hope that she actually could have the dignity of controlling her own destination without depending upon her daughter. Because I got to tell you, I don't know what kind of person it is that actually feels okay about themselves when they are planning to fail and dump it on their own kids. I don't think she feels good about herself when she says that. Or mm -hmm. she does. If she does, then somebody needs to bust her, and we can take care of either one. We can help her by busting her, or we can help her. <laughs> That's right. And, and Caitlin, help you know, her by having some hope again and going, yeah. okay, hey, let's take this thirty-two thousand. Let's motivate you to get that income up. Let's motivate you to get your budget going and start saving, because she honestly should be able to take care of herself. And I can show her how, and I will show her how, and I'll pay for it. Yeah, Caitlin, what's missing here is your mom simply doesn't know. That's what you said early in the call. She just doesn't know. And so if you could take her to that class and then begin to cast a vision for her to show her at the age of 46, if she puts away this amount of money per year over the next 20 years, where she can get to. She just needs to see some vision as well. So don't just take her to the class and encourage her to show her, but begin to take that knowledge that Dave's going to teach in that class and show her how to see what she could actually do. I mean, a lot of times, uh, Dave, ignorance is debilitating. Yeah, it, you don't know, and so it, you become hopeless, and then you do uh, stupid stuff like, you know, dump this on your 23-year-old kid. Yeah. It's just absurd. So um, I, I want you to hear, I'm, I'm uh, the main thing I want you to come away from this conversation with Caitlin is the courage to say, Mom, you are responsible for you. I don't need to be. And no, I don't accept this assignment. And I do love you. And oh, by the way, this woman right here, she could be a travel agent for gift trips sometimes, can't she? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. And so don't 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 cash the ticket in on the guilt trip. Just go, yeah, I it's know. A matter Mom. Of, hmm? I'm one of four kids who mm -hmm. like not to, you know, throw dirt on my siblings, but I'm the one who quote unquote made it out in actually did something yeah. with my life yeah you're gonna because you're gonna go big your income's gonna be more than your brothers and sisters put together uh yes sir i'm starting with 100k yeah Ooh. yeah and you're going to and you're going to 200 and then i blink in your world if you're smart as i think you are and caitlin yes. but that does not mean you have to take care of everybody that won't take care of themselves right that is not a moral obligation on your part and I want to set you free from that. Then, if you choose to turn around, once you're emotionally free from this toxic argument, this toxic mandate that's coming at you, once you're emotionally free from that, if you still choose to come back as a position of strength when you don't have to, but even though I don't have to, I want to, I'm still going to be kind and I'm going to help some people that, didn't, that are in a mess, then that's fine. That's fine. But I don't want you signing up at 23 years old for a 46-year-old babysitting job. And that's just ridiculous. That's right. And Caitlin, I would also tell you, if you're not careful, there's an emotional trap in this relationship. And here's the trap. Mom puts the pressure on you to do this. You love your mom. You don't want to disappoint mom. So here's what happens. You do something that inherently you know you shouldn't have to do. And in trying to please your mom, you end up resenting your mom. Yep. And what Dave is telling you to do is mm. uh, you need to be okay disappointing mom, but in disappointing her, hopefully pointing her to a better future. And then in the end, you won't resent her. And so I would always rather disappoint a family member or a friend 
then I would resent them because see the disappointment is on her side. The resentment will stay with you Mm -hmm. the rest of your life. And so you got to be careful of the emotional trap here. Here's the last part of the story. And then we're basically, I want you to hold on. Kelly's going to sign you and your mom up for financial peace university. I'm going to pay for it. I want you guys to go to the class. Okay. We want to help you fix this Mm -hmm. problem, but here's the last part. Uh, when you meet a guy, if he's a really good guy, uh, and he wants to be your husband and you want to be his wife and you fall in love, he's not going to like this deal. He's not going to like this obligation that comes with this deal. I met this great gal, but she insists on taking care of her mother who won't take care of herself. That's how can I say this? Highly unattractive. That's a good way of saying it. There you go. Okay. It's ugly. All right. Hold on. Kelly will pick up and uh, we'll get you signed up for Financial Peace University. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey folks, Ken Coleman here. Did you know The Ramsey Show is one of the most popular podcasts in the world? To get your daily dose of advice on life and money, check out all of our shows from The Ramsey Network wherever you listen to podcasts. about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host, Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, host of The Ken Coleman Show, and author of the number one bestseller, From Paycheck to Purpose. He is my co-host today as we answer your questions and help people build wealth, do work that they love and create actual amazing relationships. Garrett is going to start us off this hour. He is in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Hi, Garrett. What's up? Mr. Ramsey, it's an honor to ask you how you are. Better than I deserve, sir. What's up? (laughs) Good to hear. Well, uh, the company I work for, I think, uh, might be in trouble. For the last five, ten years, we've done ten to twelve million dollars in revenue, made five to ten percent every year. This year, we're showing negative $1.6 million bottom line. Cash flow is good. Um, I just, I don't know what to do. Uh, you own the company? You said you work for them. Uh, I work for them. Uh, I work pretty closely with the owner. Okay. What do you do? Uh, uh, so I'm project estimator, project manager. Um, I'm trying to help with the financials. I've followed your principles. I'm debt free. I'm trying to bring them into the company. I'm in talks with NetSuite right now to get them set up with our company. Good. Um, and we're just trying to understand how we're showing $1.6 million in a loss right now. Um, our basic expenses are payroll, fuel, and repairs. Um, well, let's is, start with a simple you, equation that profit is created by revenue minus expenses, right? Yes, sir. So what's down or what's up? Expenses up and revenues down? What's the deal? Uh, I think for the revenue for this time of year is down quite a bit. Um, I think expenses for hourly rates have gone up. We do hourly jobs and we do bid jobs. Um, for the bid jobs, we show positive revenue or positive profit for that job. Um, you're an estimator. If your hourly has gone up on the individual jobs, that's a variable expense that should be built into the job cost. Correct. Have you have you not added it to the job cost and added profit on top of it? Hourly shouldn't on a in, hourly that is that can be costed out job costed to a job. You as an estimator know that that should not have have sunk you. It should have just raised the cost of the customer. Right and. 
there are several divisions in our company, and I've I was spent a few times or a few days analyzing our hours for last year and marking that against our um, our overhead for the year. And those rates seem pretty high, and sometimes they're just not used, and they go with their gut feeling. Um, because if we charge you know four hundred dollars for a dozer, they're just going to tell us no. So we have to try and make no. No is good. If you're losing a hundred dollars when you charged four hundred, you'd have been better off to park it. So you don't lose money when it's parked. Okay. I mean, I don't. If 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 the rate if the cost of the dozer operator now makes the rate for a dozer five hundred, and you're only charging four hundred, that's why you're losing money. You haven't raised your prices after your labor cost went up. Okay. Am so I missing something? Better off, no, sir. So better off not to work for those companies if they won't accept our rates. Exactly. Because guess what? Everybody's got the same problem you got. You didn't just okay. pay your dozer operators way more than everybody else. The cost of a dozer operator went up. I got the same thing internally, except I don't have dozer operators. I've got developers. I got programmers. In the tech world. Uh, and, you know, the only thing they're dozing is ones and zeros, but they're dozing them. And so, uh, but the, uh, you know, the cost of a developer has gone up dramatically in 24 months. And guess what? That's going to be reflected in what you guys pay to go to a Ramsey whatever, you know, because, I, you know, I'm going to pass, the business owners pass those costs along. Corporations okay. don't lose money. They, they raise their prices. So Companies for our don't hourly rates. We need to project how much overhead we think we're going to have for the year, and then project how many hours we're going to use that dozer for, and then divide that, and yep. then add ten percent to that, and then that's what we should charge. Yeah, what most companies do, and you're an estimator, so you probably already know all this. But what most companies do is they say, okay, here's the cost of the uh, of the cost of goods sold. Here, here's the materials, the the equipment usage and the labor associated with the job, okay? And that's the dozer, the dozer operator, the fuel, the m truck cost to move the dozer to the site, okay? All of that is job costed. You know what I'm saying, right, Garrett? Yep. Okay. Yes, then most companies, in addition to that, will allocate a an overhead percentage to that job. And you can determine the overhead percentage however you want. You can do it based on gross revs and say, okay, we got a $10 million gross rev. This is a million-dollar job, so this job gets 10% of our overhead. You see how I did that? Yep. A pro rata allocation of overhead to each job. And you need to be job costing out your overhead and then adding profit to both the actual cost of the job, the job costed overhead together, then put a profit on top of that and bang, you're back profitable again. But I think two things have happened. One is you guys were pretty disorganized on some of these smaller jobs. The bigger jobs you were doing a good job of running the job cost on and your accounting on these smaller jobs sucks and you're guessing. I think you're correct on that. Yeah. Well, the, we're trying our you would be a normal $10 million dollar company. That's what we were doing when we were $10 million. Our accounting sucked when we were $10 million. We were, and I'm the money guy, and our accounting was horrible. And But today, man, it's so freaking dialed in, it's unbelievable. And so you're really doing a good job, a good thing here. So your uh, leadership team needs to get into entree leadership yesterday, and our guys can coach you guys through this. But this is a okay. uh, first. You got to know where you are and get this, get these numbers dialed in to each job and get and get the overhead dialed in, and then start an allocation of overhead formula of some kind, and then add profits to the top of that. Then that will tell you how to raise your prices, and this is going to go away. But what happened was you were out earning your stupidity. Yeah, I you were make yeah you're true. making enough money that your sloppiness you were getting away with it. There's also one other thing going on here, Garrett, and I heard it when you said it. We're, well, we have to say no then. We'll have to walk away from a company that doesn't want to pay it. You don't get to exclude yourself from the marketplace. Inflation is a function of all of this, and so your hourly wages have gone up, the cost of fuel, which makes that dozer more expensive. So you you don't, you don't guys are worried about them going, well, we don't like that. Well, tough, because you just got to stand your ground and explain basic economics to these folks. The dozer, if they the need you, they'll call you. The company across town has the same fuel same cost. Same problem. And they have the same labor cost. That's right.
And so if yeah. they're not going to go up on their price, you're going to be buying their machines at a nickel on the dollar when they go broke. So they're every, but this is why the cost of bread has gone up, because the cost of fuel to deliver the bread has gone up. The $10 guy that used to put the bread on the shelf is now a $20 guy. Those, is, those numbers are all built into the cost of bread. And so if you want a universal wage, guess who's going to pay for it? You are, because you're going to cut, it's going to be an absorbed into the cost of that loaf of bread. You do not get to pass on this stuff like you're a magic fairy wand. Oh my gosh. Look, I love real estate and I want you to have a house, but I don't want a house to have you. That's why you need to get in touch with Churchill Mortgage to make sure you do this right. These guys are awesome. They'll help you get on a smarter mortgage plan because they're committed to doing what's right for you. That means they check in every year with free consultations to help you stay on the right plan. They show you how to save money and interest so you can build wealth faster. They walk you through the total cost of your loan so you can make the best choice. Basically, they care. That's why we call them Ramsey Trusted. You can achieve debt-free home ownership and Churchill is here to help. Go to their site, churchillmortgage.com slash Ramsey to start your approval or get more information. For Christmas one year, I got uh, I got uh, like some socks from somebody that was very excited about the Christmas gift being socks. I, that, that's like something out of a movie. Yeah, yeah. I don't have anything sensational, but that made me laugh. Yeah. Well, we like giving things away, Ramsey. Oh. And uh, so don't worry. We aren't uh, going to re-gift you a tacky white elephant gift that your <laughs> aunt gave you. We're not going to give you Ken's socks. That, that's a blessing. Uh, we are going to give you the best gift ever, cash. Ooh. We're giving away $500 every week and a grand prize of $3,000 at the end of May with our Ramsey Cash Giveaway. Think about what you can do with $3,000. To enter the giveaway, go to RamseySolutions.com slash giveaway. You can enter every day. That way you got more chances to win. No purchase is necessary. you got to be 18. As great as the Ramsey Cash Giveaway is, we're not stopping there. To help you crush your financial, personal, and professional goals, we're putting our number one best-selling books and tools in the Ramsey well, we'll put them in the Ramsey store up for the $10 sale. $10 each. That's 67% off. Now, if you need a proven plan for getting out of debt, that's the total money makeover, 10 bucks. Ken Coleman's Getting Hired Digital Course, an addition to the Ramsey $10 sale. Just added that. These books and tools will help you make a plan today to crush your goals. 67% off the Ramsey $10 sale at RamseySolutions.com or RamseySolutions.com slash giveaway to sign up for the free giveaway. Our question of the day comes from blinds.com. They have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. That means even if you mismeasure, you pick the wrong color, they'll remake your blinds for free. You get free samples, free shipping, and with the new promos they run every month, you'll save even more. Use the promo code RAMSEY to get the best possible deal. Today's question comes from Nick in California. I have an MBA and work as a mechanical engineer for a construction company. I'm not happy with my job because the construction industry is incredibly repetitive. I would love to work in research and development with a focus on robotics and nanotechnology for the military. How do I know if making a career change is a good idea and where do I start? Okay, so you're very, very clear on where you want to uh, go. And so we're going to start with a three-part formula to get clear that, yes, in fact, this is a good idea. So we start with... 
Nick, do you have the talent and skills necessary to win in robotics and nanotechnology? Meaning basic talent that with the proper training can be honed into skills. Then you ask yourself, would I love actually working in robotics and nanotechnology? How do you figure that out? You talk to people who are in robotics and nanotechnology, you get a good idea and your heart's going to indicate whether or not you would enjoy the work. And then does it create a result that matters to you? I think the answer on this one is yes. You've chosen the military. There's a, uh, a protectiveness, something that you believe is honorable in doing this kind of work for the military. So I think the answer is yes on the mission. Does it create a result that, that I value? Now, where do I start? So if we find out that, yes, I've got the chops and I've got the juice for the work, where do I start? If it's for the military, this question doesn't make it completely clear, but this is either obvious obviously in the military serving directly for our country mm -hmm. or for a defense contractor yeah, that no, would do right. this work for the military. So in either way, we now say, okay, this is the mountaintop. I want to do robotics and nanotechnology. Who's doing this? What companies are specifically providing this work for the military? And so we begin to target them and we ask ourselves, all right, what qualifications do I need? What do I need to learn? And what do I need to do? This is going to inform where I start and starts the key here. Think of this, Nick, uh, as getting on the right ladder. And now I'm going to climb the ladder to where I'm doing that work. That's very good. So um, if I'm making a career change, is this a good idea? Uh, assuming the pay is equal or more and it's in the field that you're generally trained in and you already have this dialed in, that it, it, saw, it scratches the itch. So if you're making the same or more, it's a no-brainer to do it. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, so, yeah, we're going to go. Is it a good idea? Yes, it's a good idea. Then where do you start? Ken just laid all of that out in great detail for you. So, yeah, you need to uh, – uh, but there's – it. it don't get yourself caught up in, oh, I've got to go get a master's degree before I can do it, because I don't think you do. Yeah. Um, I think you got to get in there. You, you've got to meet some people, uh, the, the proximity That's right. principle, That's right. in, in the industry that you want to be in. And, you know, right now you hang around with construction people, mm -hmm. and you need to be hanging around with robotics and nanotechnology people. That's right. By the way, the four questions you ask them, these are four qualifying questions. Number one, what do I need to learn? That is, is it an actual degree or some type of certification or training? Number two, what experience do I need? That's what I need to do. Three, how much is that going to cost me, time and money? And then once I know that, uh, how long will this take is the fourth question, Dave. That's that's those four questions. Simple questions, by the way. And when we get those answers, here's what comes out of that. A plan. Oh, I need to learn this. I need to do this. It's going to cost me this. And as a result of my financial reality so in and order my to time not, budget. In order to not just jump off the bridge and hope there's water, um, we're, we're going to actually you know, uh, plot this out yes. and then take a step and then take another step and then take another step incrementally yeah. to where when you make the move, it's instantaneously a smart idea. That's correct. Yeah. That, it's the gradual incremental step-by-step -step process that matters. Braden is with us. Braden's in Memphis. Hi, Braden. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. How's it going? Better than I deserve. What's up? So I just got a quick question for you. So me and my wife are um, we're both 22, and we're debt-free like as a month and a half ago. And, um, Way to go. So we've kind of just been chilling, you know, relaxing. And now I'm kind of just – I'm so used to being gazelle content uh, – gazelle intense now i'm kind of feeling like i don't know what to do um honestly kind of getting a little bored because i don't have like an object um <laughs> to achieve good for you so That's i'm awesome. invested into retirement and, and everything but i'm just wondering kind of like what's next um you know what, what should i what, what kind of goal should i set oh so you have a paid for house yes sir what's it worth about 215 what do you guys do for a living uh, i work for my dad as a, a herbiculturist Mm -hmm. Is You're, that your long-term dream? Take over the business, or do you want to do something else? Yeah, I'm going to take it over. Good. Okay. What's your wife do? She actually just does a little bit of photography on the side, but takes what, care of what all What do you make? Things. I make around 80. Okay. Okay, cool. So you have a $215,000 house. You make 80. You're 22 years old, and you have zero debt yeah, of any she, kind. She, she makes about 30, so 110 total. Oh, okay. 110 household income. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. 
Well, I, I think you start laying out, you know, what are some of our goals? There are three things you can do with money, and you should always do these three things. You can be generous with it, giving it. Uh, you can enjoy it, and you should. And you can invest it, and you should. And you do need to set some very clear high definition, very uber clear goals of where you want to be. And it can be a random thing. I want to have a million dollar net worth. I want to move to a house that's 600,000 from a house that's 200. I want to pay cash for that difference. That's 400. Now, how long am I going to do that? Well, it's going to take me six years or whatever. I don't know. Right. And uh, you start laying your numbers out and then you've got something to plop that money towards each time it comes in. And, um, uh, cause right now the money is just kind of wandering. It doesn't have an assignment when it comes in and you're bored and you feel disjointed a little bit, but you need to have it. A, you know, I, I'm one of my goals was to give away a, a million dollars in a year one time. And then once I did that, one of my other goals was to give away a million dollars in one day. And I've been able to hit both those. So I had to have a new goal on my generosity goals. And so, um, pretty cool. It's been fun. So you got to, you know, you start, but I'm, I'm like three times older than you. So you got plenty of time to pull this off. I'm wondering if you want to give a million dollars to me, Dave. I don't know. Thought maybe add that to your list. I well, know. I'm just going to give you a tiger. <laughs> That's all. You get a tiger. <laughs> That's great. You get a tiger. It's a million dollar tiger, though. Well, that, it's one way of looking at it. You're going to be well known when this is over. <laughs> You're going to be known for Ken Coleman, the Tiger King. This is the Ramsey Show. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today as we answer your questions about your life and your money. In the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage, Alex and Courtney are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Good. Good, thank you. Welcome. Good to have you guys. Where do you all live? St. Louis, Missouri. All right. Good to have you. Fun. And how much debt have you paid? $150,800. Good for you. And how long did this take? Uh, four years and three months. All right, good. And your range of income during that time? Uh, when we got married in April of 2018, we started at 140,000, and uh, this past year we're at just over 205. Cool. What do y'all do for a living? Uh, I'm a senior recruiter for a technology company based in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. I work for said technology company in St. Louis as an IT project manager. Ah, were you recruited? By me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was asking. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Before or after you got married? Uh, right before he started, like six months before he got married. Oh, wow. Okay, so you recruited your own fiance. I know. And now we have great jobs, so this we're very happy. This is awesome. <laughs> that is cool. <laughs> very good move, I'm just saying. Did you get any pushback from the company uh, because he was your fiance? Um, if anything, they liked him more because I feel like they really like me. It was the team I was recruiting for. Um, so oh, she kind of really greased nicely. the skids for him. Yeah, she made it easy for him. So yeah. welcome the fact to the that, deal. You know, yeah. It's like having the older sister or older brother in yeah. elementary school that actually got good grades. Yeah. Then when you come in, they expect yeah. you to get good grades. So there you Listen, go. All my friends are just my friends because of Stacy. So <laughs> I get it. I mean, it's, it's just the deal. You outmarried yourself. That's a good, good, good look. Most well definitely. done. Yeah. Well done. I love it, you guys. So what kind of debt was this hundred? We paid off our house. Woo! <laughs> Love it. Wow, you guys are killing it. Yeah. So you get married in 2018, and the first order of business is knock out the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Boom. actually, um, we were on a vacation shortly after we got um, engaged, which we could afford. We've never really been bad at, uh, at money. We just didn't really have a plan. Mm -hmm. And so we were in Park City with some friends, and they mentioned they were reading your book. Mm -hmm. um, so we ordered it and then just kind of took off from there. Just like that. Mm -hmm. We were already pretty good, but this just tweaked a few things, and boom, three years after marriage, our house is paid for. What's this house worth? Uh, 280 to 300, wow. roughly. <laughs> I love, how old are you two? I just turned 32. I'm 35. 
32 and 35 with a paid for house. That was our last step free screamer in the other hour. I know. There's a pattern. We're 32 and 34 with a paid for house. Yeah, Lee, man. Yeah. We're, we're, we're changing this nation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, quick question on that. Do you guys worry much about inflation? <laughs> <laughs> There's a direct correlation to that, Dave. Yeah, not yeah, you know, not having a house payment. I'm not worried about inflation. Who knew? <laughs> Who knew? Yeah, there you go. No, I'm not. I'm not worried about the price of cars. I've got one. You know, it's just <laughs> you guys. So cool. So cool. Well done, man. All right. So you read the book. You're engaged. Mm-hmm. And you say, okay, when we get married, we're actually doing this. Did did one of you already own this house? So um, we did not have a house at that point. Alex was debt free. I had like seven thousand dollars on my car left. So after we finished the book, I just wrote a check, oh, and then awesome. that pretty much put us in baby step B or three mm-hmm. B. Mm-hmm. Um, so we were planning the wedding, a honeymoon, and saving for a house. Mm-hmm. Did all that early twenty eighteen. Mm-hmm. Moved into the house. Um, welcomed our first child in twenty nineteen. Twenty nineteen and. During that time, we paused everything, mm-hmm. saved up cash for uh, a mini whip, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then we um, welcomed our daughter, and then we had another daughter in 2021, and so when the youngest page turned seven months, we thought, why not pay off the house? There we Brought go. our last uh, mortgage payment. Yep. Just wow. knock it out. Now that we got this out of the way, let's get that out of the way. Wow. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. This yes. is awesome. Way to go, you guys. Thank you. How's it feel to not have a payment in the world? Feels great. Mm-hmm. If you don't owe anybody at the end of the day, so it's, it's a great day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty fun. Definitely. Pretty yeah, fun. and um, Dave, I just want to tell you, like, having a paid for house is awesome, but I think you always try and capitalize on this during conversations with people. Mm-hmm. Is take care of your family, life insurance, put together a trust. Like that, at the end of the day, for us, is so important. We we love knowing that if anything were to ever happen to us, that our kids are taken care of. Yeah. So thank you for that direction. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. That's awesome. You're welcome. You all experienced that with one of the parents or something, or? Uh, I did. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry. I saw the emotion, so yes. I knew I knew that wasn't. An My a- voice gave me away. <laughs> it's okay. So I knew I knew no, it was your heart did. Uh, your heart did. I knew it was in an academic discussion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So good. Well, that's that makes it real. I mean, and yeah, you got to get you got to have the whole package together, and then um, then you really are in the third pig house. The little the you know, third little pig, the one that's in the brick house. And then when inflation comes, I was just being interviewed earlier today by a journalist who was asking me how to, how people can survive inflation. And I said, well, you know, we've got to get out of the straw house. Now the house of sticks and move into the brick house. And that involves getting out of debt, being on a budget. And uh, you're not bulletproof, but you're a lot closer, mm-hmm. a lot closer. And the big bad wolf comes and pandemic, inflation, whatever world destabilization whatever it is all these things we worry about out there brick house is you guys are in a paid for house you're 30 years old you two babies great career i mean you you really have got yourself set up and then you do the wills and the trusts and the life insurance and then we know everybody's okay Mm -hmm. yeah it's just that's amazing yeah so you know dave said this for so many years decades you know, if you live and give like no one else later, you can live and give like no one else. So we're looking at two people who've done that. And now here you sit looking at the future to live and give like no one else. I just, I want to know what, what is that? What are you thinking about dreaming about? Yeah, What's the first next big purchase? Yeah. You got to have something. What's uh, the celebration yeah. thing we're doing? Uh, well, we left the kids with grandma, so we're celebrating in Nashville. <laughs> the, Good start. We, yeah, yep. the refrigerator already has the next goal for us, which is save up and uh, pay cash for the next house. There you yeah, go. Yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. I like it. I, I like, like it. it. The dream house. I like mm-hmm. it. I like yeah. it. Well done. And and so the house is worth, you said, 300 280 Just, to 300 280 to 300 And uh, how much is in your 401ks and IRAs? About 350 Okay. All right. So, mm, forty. Or, or, I'm sorry, uh, thirty-seven. Before you're forty, you're going to be uh, baby steps millionaires. Then that's the plan. And yeah. you know, one of the reasons why we wanted to start all of this is because we didn't want to be fifty and look back at and wonder like where did all of our money go. Um, and so, you know, we feel so fortunate to know that we have this plan together and we're moving up and we are able to impact people's lives with giving talking to people and just being hopefully an inspiration to people who are listening as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You guys are incredible. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Very, very, very well done. Who's your biggest cheerleaders? Um, 
We had Brian and Leslie who were on the stage a few years ago who paid off their house, two of our best friends, my mom, his sister, um, a lot of people cheering cheering us on. Yeah, very mm. good. Good for you guys. Well, we got a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires for you. So you complete that journey. That's the next chapter in your story for sure. And you got a great story because you've chosen to make it a great story. You control the, control the controllables, and that's what it's about. Very, very well done. Also, a copy of Total Money Makeover for you to give away on a ski trip or somebody's just started talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You may make them into a millionaire by doing that. That's good stuff. I like it. All right. Good stuff. Alex and Courtney from St. Louis. $151,000 paid off in four years and three months. House and everything. 32 and 35, making 140 to 205. They're 100% debt free. You're rocking it. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. Three, two, one. We're debt free. Yeah. About as good as life gets right there. About as good as life gets. What a great young couple and a great oh, yeah. start. Yeah. And here's the thing. It doesn't matter how old you are. You're listening to this, watching this right now. You can do it. Uh, if you're 55, you can do it. If you're 45, you can do it. If you're 25, you can do it. And if you're 32 and 35, four years and three months ago, you can do it. And they did it. It's pretty incredible. And it's one of the reasons we continue to do the debt free screams even though there's literally thousands of them now on our youtube channel mm -hmm. you can just sit and watch debt free screams for days yeah that's true literally days yeah, our youtube channel is our, our podcasts are just exploding you guys thank you so much we now have over one billion downloads on the podcast with a b that's just kind of bizarre to think about yeah. this is the ramsey show Coleman Ramsey personality, host of the Ken Coleman Show, author of the book From Paycheck to Purpose, is my co-host this hour as we talk to you about building wealth, doing work you love, and creating actual amazing relationships. Andrew is with us. Andrew is in Durham, North Carolina. Hi, Andrew. How are you? Hey, hello. It's uh, great to speak with you two gentlemen. Thank you very much. Our honor, sir. Uh, I'm, yes. Uh, I'm a grandfather, mid eighties. Uh, my wife and I are well off financially. Actually, we've been debt free for thirty years, and we visited your studio two years ago. Wonderful, wonderful experience. Here's my question: uh, We have uh, five uh, young adult grandchildren. One is twenty six, graduated college two years ago. Summa cum laude, great Christian girl. She took an in a Christian internship that provided her a part-time job with uh, some lawyers, and she finished the internship and went on to uh, take the full-time position as a paralegal. So she's making, like, in the mid-30s, she really dislikes the job. She loves writing, and seems to have talent in that field. She wants to be in, like, journalism, broadcasting. She has an opportunity to attend a one-year master's program uh, at a well-regarded Guarded Northern University. The cost is about seventy-five thousand. She'll get a twenty-five thousand dollars scholarship. She needs an additional fifty thousand plus living cost. Uh, my concerns are this: she's never worked in the field that she's interested in, and I just wonder how you know how important that would be in her career. We're thinking of helping 
but uh, maybe having some strings attached, uh, maybe a loan from our family trust. And I'm just wondering how you would guide her and my wife and myself uh, to help her to maximum ability. Wow. Fantastic uh, question. So uh, I think she needs to spend some time with people that are in broadcasting or journalism in the specific area that she's interested in. There might be two or three different lanes. And my advice would be to have her spend some time with them to learn the ins and outs and what does a day look like? What does the financial path look like? What does growth look like? Not just in position, but also in income. And then I would also challenge her uh, to uh, reconsider the prestigious university in the Northeast because nobody cares where a broadcaster went to school. Uh, They just don't. In fact, we don't even care where our doctors went to school by evidence of the fact that few of us ever ask where our doctors went to med school. And so the scholarship of 25000 at a very prestigious school could probably be uh, a full scholarship potentially or certainly less money for you to give to her uh, to further her education and get that experience. I will say in broadcasting, a degree is not required. At the age of 33, I made a pivot to move into broadcasting and I had to earn my way and figure out how to do it on the side and eventually got Dave Ramsey's attention Uh, but there was no school or degree involved it was just good old-fashioned learning how to do broadcasting doing small things while having a day job and uh, so I would say that in broadcasting if she were to get a full ride uh, or you were to pay a lot less money for a less prestigious school but that one-year program got her some real life broadcasting experience in the form of internships and some premium placement uh, that could certainly help but it's not necessary so um yeah, well that yeah I, jay yeah I, I really appreciate your heart andrew and the way you asked the question the way you poised it is very loving but it's also very wise and very practical as would be expected from a man like you um the <laughs> uh, the, the the thing is this okay i I've been in broadcasting for 30 years. I work with just about every major network that you see or hear on television or radio anywhere. Um, I I do interviews almost every week with uh, someone outside of here, whether they be in New York or California or Atlanta or Durham, North Carolina even. Um, And and I got to tell you, I don't think that – Uh, As a matter of fact, I'm 100% positive that a master's degree is not necessary to be a writer and to be a journalist. It's simply not. Um, And it's certainly not worth $75,000 for a one-year program. Uh, There's no return on investment on that. The goal that your granddaughter has is a valid goal, and she has discovered or has been told a mistaken method to get to her goal. The ladder that she wants to use to get to her goal is the wrong ladder. It's not a necessary ladder, and it's super expensive. And so um, I don't know that as a grandpa you'll be able to talk her down off this thing. She's probably all hyped up about going to this particular school. The prestige of it's got her all jazzed, and she's jonesed up with it. Uh, and she's got this idea that being a master's is, you know, having a master's is going to open all these doors. And the truth is it just doesn't, uh, it doesn't, you can either write and and you get in there and you start writing and you write and you learn to write copy and you learn to communicate, uh, verbally and you learn to work a stage or a camera or a microphone, depending on which side of the thing you're going to be on and and what part of broadcasting and and journalism you're going to be involved in. Uh, but uh, you know, here's the other thing. They don't make any money. It's not, it's not a re- big lucrative yeah. career. And so, I mean, if you're yeah. a writer for a major network in New York City, you make 50 or 60 grand, and you're 25, 26 years old, and they work you 80 hours a week. And, you know, and, and so you can't justify a $75,000 additional expense no. to go do that. No. She's already got the skills to do it. And uh, we work with those young people every day, and they, most of them are young people uh, in, in these roles. And they're, you know, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're writing the teleprompter for the script we're getting ready to do in the interview. And most people don't follow it after they write it, but it's done, you know. And so, I don't know how you're going to talk her out of it, 
But, boy, if you could, you should, because she's barking up the wrong tree. She's getting ready to spend a whole bunch of money she doesn't need to spend to go do something she doesn't need to do to get to be who she wants to be. Yeah. That, uh, and, and I actually do know something about that. You know, it's like we're actually <laughs> right, right square in the middle of it. You know? Right. Well, neither you or I have formal broadcasting training. We just started doing it, and you, you stink at first. You yeah, know? but I mean, you, the, you think the number of people that we talk to that are behind the scenes, that are writers. Oh, yeah. That they're, they're print reporters yeah. in journalism or they're script writers for right. shows, uh, and, and they're trying to build, you know, what we call produce a segment. That's correct. Meaning that we're working with Fox and Friends, and we're getting ready to go on Fox and Friends, and the producer that's producing the segment normally is 26 years old. Oh, yeah. No you know, master's. And, and uh, well, I don't know if she or he's got a master's, but I have no indication that they do, and I have no care if they do. Right. Neither does uh, Steve Ducey when he That's stands right. in front of the camera. Yeah. All he wants to know is, can we? did we produce a segment where it That's makes correct. it logical, it's cogent, the narrative is there, the story arc is there, are we delivering in a, in a concise manner, mm-hmm. and, and basic journalism rules. And, I mean, you can get that in a... Community college taking three writing last classes. Outside of that, Dave, the very first broadcasting and only broadcasting class I ever took was $699 with a local TV and radio producer. He was legit in Atlanta. And I was with a bunch of 20-somethings. And I learned things in that six-week course, one night a week, six weeks. I learned things in that course that I still use today with you. And yeah. and it's the basic fundamental. So who can teach me what I actually need to learn is the question we ask. And, and Andrew, what, what we're all talking about here is you and Ken and I is where the education system and the culture are, are uh, ha- have misled mm-hmm. about the last three generations and told them that where you go to school matters. And that you always have to have more school no matter what. And that uh, ridiculous levels of education are necessary to pull off some of these basic jobs. Mm -hmm. And they're not. She has a four-year degree. She's been a paralegal. She's already doing writing all day long. It's just boring, bad writing in the law office, you know. And so she's fine. Uh, I would tell her to go to work. Go to work in the journalism field. She doesn't like her job. Change jobs. And and take, take some night classes on writing. And uh, that's what I would do. And I would not loan her money. Um, And I would not give her money to do something that is a path that I don't believe is the correct path. This is The Ramsey Show. Dave here. You can find all of our shows with the Ramsey Network app on your smartphone. It's the only place to listen to the entire back catalog of episodes. Download the Ramsey Network app in your favorite app store today. about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host this hour. As we talk about your life and your money, we help people build wealth, do work they love, and create amazing actual relationships. Thanks for jumping in. The phone number is 888-825-5225. Well, Ken, two years ago right now, people were locked down in their homes. Mm. We had to flatten the curve. (laughs) You remember flattening the curve? Well, I remember hearing about it, but it turns out you and I and some brave staff people kept coming in and putting out live shows. So I heard about it. And we heard about, but the curve apparently had to be flattened. Yes. And then later, apparently. Two weeks is what We had to be masked and then apparently we didn't. Yeah. And then apparently we all had to be vaccinated and then apparently we didn't. Mm -hmm. And, um. Some people are still bathing in that fear porn that's out there. Yes. In the middle of all of that, there's um, a complete, I mean, we shut down the American economy Yes. for, you know, what, 60 to 90 days. Yes. And we're now experiencing inflation as a result of that 
uh, lack of production creating shortages and now a an over uh, uh, zealous uh, retail thrive driving supply i mean driving demand way high and supplies still out of kilter two years later we're trying to recover from the flattening of the curve mm. uh, but one of the things i didn't know until i picked up this from nbc news this week um they're calling the ppp plan the biggest fraud in a generation the looting of the covid relief plan yeah Remember PPP? Oh, yeah. Where businesses were not going to, you know, the economy was going to collapse if the government didn't step in. Right. Just like we were all going to die. After they caused the collapse. We were all going to die if we didn't flatten the curve. Right. The economy was going to collapse, and everybody was scared, and everybody's running around screaming and screeching at the top of their lungs. And so the government lines up. This just blows my mind. Um 90, I'm, I'm sorry, wait a minute, see. Uh, let's just say, okay, they bought Lamborghinis, they bought Ferraris and Bentleys, here's the article, and Teslas, of course, lots of Teslas, many who participated in what prosecutors are calling the largest fraud in U.S. history, the theft of hundreds of billions of dollars in taxpayer money intended to help those harmed by co- the COVID-19 pandemic. Mm-hmm. Instead, uh, these fraudsters came in and couldn't resist purchasing luxury automobiles, mansions, private jet flights, and swanky vacations. They came into the riches by participating in what experts say is the theft of as much as $80 billion, $80 billion oh, yeah. of the PPP yeah, was it's... fraudulent use and theft of the $800 billion that was handed out in the COVID relief plan known as the Paycheck Protection Program, or PPP. That's on top of the $90 billion to $400 billion believed to have been stolen from the other $900 billion under the COVID Unemployment Relief Program. Right. So we've got $800 billion and $900 billion we dumped into saving the world. Well, we have a theme, Dave. So what happens is when government says they're going to come in to save the day, government doesn't operate efficiently or effectively. And what we had was a small business administration on the first half of this, the PPP, saying, hey, write us a letter. This is a, this is about as fundamental as it was. And tell us why you need it. So what do these people do? These scumbags, they go, let's take advantage of the U.S. government because they're a bunch of morons and we're going to get money. And they got it. Well, and the government happened? just no. said, here's a check, here's a check, here's a check, here's a check because they wanted to save the day exactly well and the trump administration truly believed and they were screwed in the head that they had to get this money plugged into the economy fast to offset the the drop uh, uh, to offset the quarantine right and when you go at that rate of speed you don't have any way to verify and put in place that's correct and you drop trillions of and trillions of dollars out there, and now we're finding out that well over 10% of it. Unbelievable. No, north of $500 billion now went to people who did not have an unemployment problem and did not even qualify for PPP because all they did was say, sign this document and check here that you really are due this money. Right. They didn't even look. No. Yeah, you know, I, I have 46 employees. <laughs> I happen to work out of my basement and have no employees, right. but I have 46 employees, and here's the name of my company. People were going to state records and pulling company names off of state records and filing under that with false addresses, basically creating a form of identity theft and getting checks for hundreds of thousands of dollars sent to them to keep their business open, and they didn't even have a business. Yeah, this is what happens when leaders lead from desperation. Desperation and fear. It's exactly what panic. happens. It was panic. Full Sheer on, panic. It was full on panic. Right. And when people are panicking, they're not leaders. That's correct. And, and I don't care if you're a Democrat, you're a Republican, right. you're a lefty, you're a masker, you're a righty, you're an anti-masker, you're a vaxxer, or you're an anti-vaxxer. If you're in a full on panic, you're straight up stupid. That's right. And so what was happening is the government was trying to give the illusion of we're in control. We got you. And the fact of the matter is they didn't. And this is taxpayer dollars. Let's bring this back to when you hear numbers like that. I want to make sure you folks catch this because those numbers are so big. It kind of feels like, oh, it's that's just so that's your 
money. That is taxpayer dollars being fraudulently spent, and all because leaders are trying to give the illusion that they can solve your problems. And by the way, they're the source of the shutdown, where the governors and the senators, Trump, all of them, they all signed on to this shut down and it broke businesses and in their desire to help the businesses they broke they ended up wasting money and i got to tell you something it, it ought to be a wake-up call to the american Somebody people ought to stop and go hey yeah this is this whole thing yeah was off <laughs> yeah and let's I mean, stop blindly this is trusting like some people. kind of bad movie right here oh, yeah. but you five hundred billion dollars paid out to people that were, didn't even own businesses no. or that weren't even unemployed in the name of panic brought on by false sets of assumptions about numbers. Mm-hmm. Oh God, it just is. It's a, it's a case study in leadership, not leading yeah. and in the nanny state run amok. It's true. And, and so the people are screaming, you have to take care of us because now you made us locked us in our house and now you have to feed us. Yeah. And uh, man, people, you people, I'm telling you, if you ever allow your government to do this to you again, you're a bunch of freaking sheep. Be- uh, because this, the, the results of this are going to ripple through our economy for a decade. Five hundred. Yes. Million dollars, and here's the deal: you it's can do half something a about trillion this. dollars. Yeah, you know you what can you can do? Vote. Go vote. Anybody that was a party to From this a kind of school junk, board, all send the way them to home. a governor, to a senator, to a president, you can vote. Send them home. Good God, this is the Ramsey Show. Chaos. That's what it can feel like when your business is growing so fast you've outgrown your financial and accounting software. The faster you grow, the more likely you are to lose control of the numbers. And here's the reality. If you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. That's why we use NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. Over 28,000 companies use NetSuite by Oracle, including Ramsey Solutions, because NetSuite gives us a single view of everything we need to make daily decisions. Whether you're making a few million to hundreds of millions a year, NetSuite gives you the visibility and control of the things you need to grow, like your financials, inventory, HR, planning, budgeting, and more, all in one dashboard. Go to netsuite.com slash Ramsey right now to get their free white paper, Jumpstart Your CFO Career. Ken Coleman, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Guys, if you're wondering whether to buy or sell a home this year, we've got some answers. You can expect the market to be a lot like last year. Prices are still on the rise. Interest rates are headed up, too. What does that mean for you? It means if you're buying a home, you might be up against some heavy competition, big price tags, and a higher interest rate. And that can mean mortgage payments that are higher. So you need to stick to your budget. And if you want to sell your home, chances are you want to sell it quickly and you want to sell it for top dollar. Of course, that's going to depend on where you are. Every market's different. To win in any market, you really have to know what you're doing. And this is not amateur hour right now. You need a pro in your corner. You need an experienced real estate agent at your fingertips. And we have them through our endorsed local provider program. As Ramsey Trusted pros they care about your values and they keep well they help you keep more of your money in your pocket so check out ramseysolutions.com slash agent connect with a ramsey trusted real estate agent a pro 
that can help you navigate this local market that you are in. RamseySolutions.com slash agent. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Jacob is in Toledo. Hi, Jacob. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Great, man. What's up? Uh, <clears throat> I've been a long-time listener, but I've never put your teachings into practice until finally this year I decided to get serious. And last year I financed a vehicle, and uh, this year I was able to sell it and make a little bit of money back. Uh, I made about $2,500 after uh, the lien was paid off. And um, I was excited because I owe about $4,000 in credit cards, and I was excited to take a chunk out of it. And I feel like the Lord has put it on my heart to uh, tithe it. Um, I've kind of been tossing it back and forth with my wife exactly how much uh, if we should do the whole thing, if it's smart to do it at all, because I know that we're we're still in a little bit of debt. I mean, we're not crazy into debt, but we we have a little bit of debt left to go. And uh, but I just feel like it's just really been weighing down on me that um, I should be giving this money that it doesn't really belong to me. Um, and uh, I just don't give, want to giving be what giving what money? How much money? Uh, the the, the twenty five hundred dollars that I uh, the whole twenty five hundred dollars out of mm-hmm, yes. Okay, that's not a tithe. I well a tithe is ten percent a tithe is ten percent of your profit. That's a tithe. But if you want to be if you're you're just saying you feel like the Holy Spirit's leading you to just give everything you made on this. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. I, I'm not, I, use, I, I never argue with God. If right. God is telling you to do something, do it, okay? I'm not ever going to do that. I can give you the biblical guidelines on tithing. I can, we can talk through the technicalities of that, and we can pan back and say your Heavenly Father's crazy about you, and he doesn't need your money, um, and none of the giving should ever be done out of compulsion or guilt or toxic twisting or anything else. All giving should be done out of an open hand and an understanding that I really just manage this for God anyway. What do you want me to do with it, Heavenly Father? It's your money anyway. And so if, if Father is saying give the 2500 then do give the 2500 but your biblical guideline on tithing would be simply you 10% of the profit you made on the car the profit would be how much more you sold the car for than what you paid for it what'd you pay for it yeah right like i didn't i would not say that i technically profited okay uh, then there's not I a did. tithe due so we'll just change the language in this discussion, okay? Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. I, that's okay. I must have used the wrong term. No, that's, no, that's okay. I just want to make sure that we're clear. I mean, a tithe is a tenth of your profits, a tenth of your increase from Deuteronomy is the scripture, okay? So you don't have an increase on this car. You have a decrease. You lost money on the car in terms of what you bought it for, what you sold it for versus what you bought it for. But you got out of the debt, and you ended up with some money in your pocket, and you do feel like God's telling you to give that money. Then if he's telling you that, then give the money. I'm okay with that. Okay. Yeah, I just didn't want to be stupid anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't think it's stupid to follow if you think it's God. Now, I always, I mean, I've been walking with God for 40 years, and so... I'm always less so today than 40 years ago, but I, I'm never a thousand percent sure that I heard God on something that is uh, different than Scripture says. Now, if there's a scriptural guideline, then that's simple for me. I'm going to do it, okay? That, that's an obedience issue for me f- from a faith walk, all right? But uh, it's something like, okay, you just made this profit, and you're trying to get out of debt, or not profit, you made this uh, net gain or, or net cash to your pocket, cash flow, that you could throw at the debt, or you feel like God might be telling you to give it, then uh, there's not really a, a, a biblical reference that says anything other than be obedient to the Holy Spirit. Now, what I was going to say, though, is I, I still wonder until I look back. Now, I can always look back and tell, but in the moment like you are, you're facing this, I still sometimes have a little bit of trouble discerning but the difference between the Holy Spirit and last night's pizza uh, indigestion, okay? So, I mean, is this just guilt or is this something floating around because you're finally starting to get control? I don't know any of that, but I never argue with someone. When someone plays the God card, I back up and go do whatever he said. 
Yeah, I, Jacob, I just want to ask you, did you, did you see something, experience something, and you felt a tug on your heart, and you go, I, I could do something there, I feel like I want to do something? Is there something specific on this? I just I just felt like, and I, I don't really like explaining it to people just because some people believe you, some people don't, but, uh, and, and that's fine, but I just felt like the Lord, I felt like somebody was telling me that it belonged to him. Got it. Very good. Okay. I believe you. I do too. Yeah, now, right. I will tell you this. It does belong to him. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All of it belongs to him. It belonged to him. That car belonged to him before you sold it. Agreed? Right. So this is just a matter, but you're saying you feel like you want to transfer it into a ministry somewhere, and you feel like that's the guidance that the Holy Spirit's giving you. I'm not going to dispute that. I'm really not. Um, that that's a fine thing to do if you want to do that. And you're never going to look back and regret doing it. You're never going to go, oh, that was the dumbest thing yeah. I ever did in my life. Yeah. I've never said that about generosity. Now, I have given into some situations where I didn't look into it well or something like that, and I look back and I go, well, probably should have been more careful with that generosity. I'm not sure I was wise with it in terms of who I gave it to or how I gave it or something like that. But I've never regretted the actual act of giving. Yep. Never once. Or obedience. Or the act of uh, following what I feel like is God's voice. Okay. Right. So if, I understand. The more you pray about that, then the more you get a peace about you did hear God's voice on this, then the more you need to just do it. But it's not a finan it's not a biblical financial principle and it's not, you know, something that I can tell you one hundred percent this is other than my sheep know my voice, follow the shepherd. Right? Right. So have at it, brother. You're a good man. You got a tender, good heart, and you're going to do well. You can never mess up being generous. Well, you can, but I mean, it's you, you very seldom regret it. You never look back at the end of your life and go, "Man, I just gave too much." Mm -hmm. People never say that. It never comes up. Uh, they do say things like, "I really didn't need some of those things I bought." They do say things like that. But the idea that um, we're going to give that, and I got to tell you, when you got four thousand dollars in credit card debt and you get twenty five hundred dollars in your hand and you're willing to release it that says something about your spiritual walk it absolutely does positive and, yeah very positive walk. very positive and you know i i would say make this count you know in the sense of you know this is an investment you've been asked to give so give it wisely if there's nothing specific that you've been led to then really do your homework and invest this wisely because it's going to come back yeah in multiple ways but also, Jacob, probably what you're learning through this whole process is to remember 100% of it is God's. And then he gives us guidelines on how to manage his money for him. One of those guidelines is take care of your own household first, or you're worse than an unbeliever. That's a scriptural guideline. This is The Ramsey Show. Lobby of Ramsey Solutions. Uh, Jeremy and Ashley are on the debt free stage. Congratulations, guys. Where are y'all from? Uh, New Philadelphia, Ohio. Cool. Good to have you. Welcome to Nashville. Thanks. How much debt have you paid off? Uh, $241,600. Good for you guys. And how long did that take? Uh, five years and six months. Wow. And your range of income during that time? Uh, it stayed pretty consistent around $100,000. We had a couple medical events in there and a uh, job change. Mm -hmm. Cool. What do y'all do for a living? I am a local truck driver. Mm -hmm. I'm an insurance sales agent. 
Very good. Good for you guys. Fun. So what kind of debt is this 242000 Three cars, a lawnmower, our deck, a 401k loan, and our house. Oh, there goes the house. <laughs> Look at it, weird people. Wow. And the lawnmower. Yeah! yeah. yeah. I love Way that one. Way to go, guys. We need the upgrade to the tractor. Now. <laughs> there we go. It. I love it. Not a debt in the world. Congratulations. Thank you. Fabulously done. So how old are you two? I am 36. I'm 34. This is the uh, 30-year-old debt-free yes. house and everything show <laughs> yes. today. Yes. Wow, 36 and 34. Very cool. Five years and six months you've been pounding at this whole process uh, as an as a insurance agent and a truck driver. Very, very well done. What's the house worth? About 380 right now. Very cool. How much in your retirement accounts? A little over 100000 Good for you. All right. So you're up over a half a million total, give or take, and uh, heading towards a million dollars, getting ready to be Baby Steps Millionaires. Look at you guys. I'm so proud of you. 34, 36 years old, you're kicking it. Well done. All right. So what happened five years ago? Because y'all are weird. We are weird. <laughs> so about five years ago, I work for a small manufacturing company, and the president of that company takes like the growth of his employees very seriously both uh, personally and professionally. So he shuts down the plant like six to eight times every year and we have just small group discussions about everything you can imagine from leadership to life to even finances. Wow. So one day in 2016, the end of 2016, um, the topic of the day was a guy named Dave Ramsey and his seven step process to financial freedom. So I left the meeting a little intrigued, but didn't really bounce on anything until a couple of days later. The HR lady actually sent out a mass email to everybody saying that um, she had a copy of your book and if anybody wanted to borrow it. So, of course, I jumped all over that, borrowed it, and within, I don't know, two weeks, you guys had me like hook, line, and sinker. Wow. This is intriguing. So, how big a manufacturing plant is that? Uh, it's about 100 people. Okay. So, he just shut it down, had a little discussions periodically to help his his men and women there do better right it's during our great slow, leadership our slow times but yeah, yeah about eight times a year i got a follow up on that do you guys have low turnover yes now that now let me tell you something that that right there dave is the example of investing in your people manufacturing is a high turnover business and you have low turnover how much of it where you used to say? work he didn't work there now. i know but yeah. my point is is that low turnover that's a big big takeaway there an investment in people they don't wow. want to leave good for you man that's yeah. great. Wow. So uh, that's fun. And, and they, they'll, you know, go by, pick up the book, the Linda, Linda Library thing here. <laughs> and two weeks later. Uh, so actually, Jeremy's uh, getting indoctrinated at work. Um, what were you what were you saying at home? I just pretty much thought he was crazy. And <laughs> I was like, do what you want. I'll do what I want. It's Ooh. fine. Ooh. And then he made me sit down and do a, a budget sheet of every little penny we spent for a few months. And that's when I realized what we were spending and where we were spending it and that it was really time to make some changes. Oh, wake up call. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of revealing. <laughs> Very. Uh, little shame <laughs> inducing, but uh, it's uh, our conviction, I guess, is better than shame. You get convicted when you look and you go, where's all our money yes. going? Look at this. Well, I know why we don't have any retirement. We're eating it. We yes. eat out every night. <laughs> that's, yeah. That was that's, my That's what people, that's what happens when you look at this stuff. Pretty cool, guys. And so game on after that, huh? For yes. sure. All right. And what did you do following that? You get on a budget and you start following the baby steps. Yep. And um, we pretty much stayed gazelle intense the whole time, uh, even after baby step two when we paid off all the debt. Um, we just kept throwing everything we could at the mortgage. Like that was the end goal. We didn't feel debt free until the mortgage was out from under us because when we signed the mortgage paper, the paperwork, we felt like we was never going to pay it off. It was a hundred and we ended up borrowing about $200,000 on the house. Mm -hmm. And it just felt like it was, you know, an insurpassable mountain, something we would never, you know, never climb. Felt like you'd signed your life away. Right. Exactly. Yes. Literally. You know? Yes. <laughs> but then you say, no, I'm taking my life back. Correct. Way to go, guys. Very, very cool. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. What do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is now that you've done it? I would say the key would be to make your budget, follow your budget. Um, there was many times we wanted to go do something, but it wasn't in our budget or we didn't have the cash flow for it. Or we, you know, we told friends and family we couldn't go out to eat that month because we already spent our monthly budget and just sticking to the budget. It 
really does work. I got a question about the momentum part of this journey. I mean, this is a long time, five years, six months. That's a journey. Yes. Is there a point where you hit kind of, okay, uh, we, we, we feel like we're on the downhill slope here. We've got this despite challenges, budget issues, saying no. Was there a moment of great momentum that you remember? Probably like 2020, like right when COVID hit. Um, we didn't slow down. We got busier and made more, you know, was making more money and the government kind of helped with a little bit, I guess. And uh, sure. it just made the process easier. And it was like, look, if we dial everything in right now, we can have this paid off by, we, well, you know, 2022. Wow. And we literally just paid it off, what, a week and a half ago? Yes. Wow. Yep. So <laughs> we, don't, we don't have the first check yet, but we are <laughs> I love dead. it. That is awesome. Man, so how's it feel to be 100% free? Amazing. Free. <laughs> I don't know that it's hit me yet. Like I still, I, I don't know. I just, the, I mowed. To, I told her I mowed the grass the other day, and it felt a little different. But <laughs> <laughs> well, think about that new budget you get to do, right? Coming up for a tractor. Uh, oh, <laughs> there's, oh, there's, they got the money spent already. So there's, there we go. Know, yes, the kids. <laughs> <laughs> didn't didn't take long no. no didn't take long to adjust to the newfound prosperity are you getting a zero turn no i have a steiner right now oh okay all right all right here we go game on we're talking tractor now I know. <laughs> <laughs> well done you guys very very well done who were your biggest cheerleaders outside you guys i would say his cousins um we're pretty private people in life so not many people know our you know financial situation or what we're doing but his cousins also follow dave ramsey so they were definitely on our journey with us we were very open with them um, we went out to dinner with them a lot they would never let us even pay for our dinner because they said take that money and put it on your house so there you go oh, that's awesome wow yes. so priority number one is paying for their meal yes. yeah <laughs> that's cool there you go. yes we're taking you to dinner tonight right, right yeah right. <laughs> Because we now can, this is awesome, well, yes. live like no one else, and later you can live and buy your cousin's dinner. Yes. Like I was no going to say, else. eat like no one else. There you go. <laughs> it's kind of nice. <laughs> so, I'm going with that one. I'm going with that. I'm sticking to it. Way to right. go, guys. All right, bring the kiddos up. What are their names and ages? Uh, we have Easton. He's seven. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. This is Carson. He's 11. Mm -hmm. Riley's 13. Mm -hmm. Jace is eight. And Rylan is 12. All right. Very cool. Well done, guys. Very well done. You changed your family tree. We've got a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires for you. That's the next chapter in your story. You are well on your way. Probably by the time you're 40 or so, you're going to be there at this current rate. Well done. Very well done. And also a copy of Total Money Makeover. Maybe you can loan it to somebody at work. You never know how that's going to turn out. Right. Look what happened to you. So good stuff. All right. Jeremy and Ashley and the gang. $242,000 <laughs> Paid off house and everything. Five years and six months later, make it 100K. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. All right. Three, two, one. We're, We're debt free. free. Yeah. I love it. All right, Jeremy, you got to call your old boss. Tell him you paid off your house because of what he did at that plant. Yes. So That's cool. good stuff. This is The Ramsey Show. Our scripture of the day, Psalm 147, 4 and 5. He determines the number of stars and calls them by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. Oliver Wendell Holmes said, The young man knows the rules, but the old man knows the exceptions. <laughs> oh, that's deep. That's so true. <laughs> that would be true. Ken Coleman, Dr. John Deloney, George Camel, Rachel Cruz, and I are doing a a building wealth event tomorrow evening, Thursday evening in Las Vegas. 
If you want to come, there are still a few tickets left. We've sold almost 3,000 tickets for the event. Wow. We would love to have you. I just got an update a minute ago. It's 2,625 tickets sold so far. And uh, so there's still some tickets available. You still can come. We would love to have you in Las Vegas. Uh, May the 5th, for those of you listening to this at another time, Thursday night or is going to be the event. And uh, there at Central Church. And just jump online at RamseySolutions.com slash events. And you can pick up your tickets. They're only $25. You can get a four-pack. And you and your spouse can bring some friends for only $60. And you get these people you've been trying to talk into this stuff. Uh, this is a good. Uh, way of learning because we're going to be talking about a lot of the things happening in the culture right now. Ken and uh, Dr. Deloney are going to be doing a breakout ahead of time and uh, a kickoff thing, and then we'll be doing the major event with all of us and be signing books and pictures and everything afterwards. Um, it is a full-on Ramsey, Ramsey personality is event. Of course, I'll be there in the midst of all of it as well. So make sure you're coming out Las Vegas, uh, May the 5th, tomorrow night, Thursday night, still some tickets again, only $25 and there's still some left about 3000 folks going to be there. So by the way, that means if you've got a ticket, you should get there pretty early because you know, it takes a little while to move 3000 people in and out of a building. It's not an instantaneous process. If you thought, oh, well, it's just Dave and Ken. I'm going to go hang out with them. Well, yeah, no, no, it takes a little bit. So give yourself a little, give yourself a little margin. It's a Thursday night, work night, so a uh, school night. So, you know, give yourself a little margin and make sure you get over there. It's going to be fun, Ken. I, you know, so glad to be back out on the road. It's one of the, the really the key tenets of what we do at Ramsey Solutions in, in meeting people where they are and getting out on the road. And of course, we just all missed it. You know, we missed the energy. Our Miss, events are we, always a we, lot of fun. We like people. We do. It's not good that man be alone no and there's something special about a room dave where people are there to get better whatever the topic you yeah. know and, and these are people that are intentional that come to these events and and uh i can tell you times i have sat in an audience yeah in various you know sales conferences mm -hmm. uh seminars of different kinds church where i'm sitting in the audience and something done and said from stage and i'm in proximity to thousands of other humans and it feels like right that moment that something happened and that, that turned the trajectory of my life. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Can't wait. Come on out. We're just getting started. We, we, we got more events coming. Uh, we got a full fall slate, too. So Orlando, May 19th as well. Coming yeah, to Orlando. Two weeks we'll be in Orlando. So go and, get that, go ahead and get those tickets. And we've got about the same number of tickets sold there as well. So good stuff. All right, Bob is in Eugene, Oregon. Hey, Bob, how are you? Uh, hello. How are you doing? Better than I deserve. What's up? Um, so I'm an electrical contractor, and I'm new. I've only been – I've been doing it for 18 years, but I've built business for three. Um, and I'd like to branch out, but I don't know exactly how much money I should have in reserve to hire an employee. I got to – in the work – I'm kind of sketchy on the work, too. I mean, I got two weeks booked out to three months. It varies mm -hmm. as, it, as the time goes on. And I just – what's the – good amount of money I should have set aside to hire an employee. Okay. Are you running a profit and loss statement on your business? Yeah. Okay. How much profit do you make a month? Oh, uh, I, we're not the most thorough. We do that. I can tell you at the end of the year what my profit is. Okay. You need to start doing one monthly. Okay. And uh, because that'll give you uh, what you're really making on the business that month. And then the same time next year, you'll look and say, okay, I'm doing better or worse than last year. And that kind of thing it starts to give you some measures in the business to know where you're going and how you're doing it. Um, so okay. what did you pay taxes on last year? hundred thousand. Way to go. Good for you. What does it cost to hire someone? Um, for base, for a journeyman in our area, about 60,000. Okay. All right. And so if you add no revenue to your company as a result of hiring him, you'll make 40. Yeah. Okay. But he gets paid. Can you yeah. do that? Yeah. If you, I mean, you think you're going to get yeah. more, you think you're going to get some more work, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm what, hoping to get an employee so then I can push for going to try and fetch more to work instead of doing the whole rigmarole. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, but you've, the net result has to be that the company ha takes in more than $60,000 more than it used to, right? 
Yeah, that's the scary part for me. <laughs> yeah. And you kind of you got to figure that out. You go, okay, I'm making this per job, and this is what, you know, how many jobs can I add? If I'm doing some, he's doing some, and I'm out there, you know, snagging new work, and you're figuring that out. Because all of that factors into how much you should have set aside. Because if, if you can bring in enough to pay for him from day one, then obviously you would not need to set aside anything. But yeah. if you but if it's going to take you three months to get ramped up once they come on board, then you need fifteen thousand dollars because that's three months of sixty thousand a year, or five thousand a month. Okay, kind of yeah, look um, at that. So you know, it'd be a good idea to have an extra ten grand laying around. Um, the economy also. I well, the the, the status of the world has me. I, I'm a little bit too paranoid on that. I probably shouldn't be. Yeah. Well, yeah, let me speak to that for a second, Bob, because I don't know if you know this or not. I'm sure you do. But uh, we saw the trades explode in 2020 in 2021. And yeah. in 2020, we thought the world was coming to an end. Nobody knew what the economy was going to do. And the trades never missed a beat. Yeah, it turned out you were essential. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, I, I appreciate a healthy amount of caution, but I, I would uh, guard against fear. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think you give it a shot, dude, and you just be honest with the guy that's coming in. Go, I've never done this before. I'm a little bit scared, but I think i got a lot of work here, and if you want to try this together with me, let's do it. And that's how I hired my first person. I told him the truth. Marisa is with us in Phoenix. Hi, Marisa. What's up? Hi. I'm grateful to be here. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. How can we help? I am engaged, and um, something that I'd like before the wedding is for my fiancé to get out of credit card debt. Good. What's he make? Just recent. (laughs) uh, Makes about $100,000 a year. How much is his credit card debt? $35,000. Has he got any money? Mm, A little bit of an emergency savings. How much? $1,000. Okay. Got baby step one. Okay. And uh, when are you planning on getting married? No date set because it's important to me that we can tackle this um, credit card debt. No, we don't tackle credit card debt when we aren't married. He tackles credit card debt. Yes. You don't pay his debt until you're married. He pays it. Got it. That's clear. Yeah, that's going to create a strain on the relationship and a major mess in the event of a breakup. And no, you don't want to do any of that. It's not good for anybody involved. So, and I, I, you can do what you want to do. We at Ramsey don't tell people to avoid marriage because of debt. We do tell people to avoid marriage because someone doesn't want to deal with their debt. But if your fiance is plowing into this and is aggressively attacking it, using the debt snowball, living on a budget, being careful, being wise, being frugal, and hitting this debt hard, and he's knocked off 10000 of the 30000 and you can see that he's well on his way, and he's a changed man, and the credit cards are cut up, then I, I wouldn't, as my, if you were my daughter, I would tell you to marry him. <laughs> and that's what we're working, working towards. But um, he recently talked to me about him taking out a personal loan or some options in consolidating his credit card debt, which leads me to calling you because yeah. he finally gave me that green light where he's he's ready to, to move forward. Yeah. So well, you don't need to consolidate advice? anything. You just need to pay it. He makes $100,000 a year. He can pay it really, really fast. He hasn't got any expenses except you right now. And you could be determined to not be an expense starting ready, set, go. Yeah. Uh, what we need to do is we'll get you guys into Financial Peace University. Hold on. Kelly, I'll sign you guys up. We'll give it to you as an advanced wedding gift. And you guys go through it and uh, start talking about it. But he pays his own debt, and he starts on it immediately. And we don't borrow our way out of debt with consolidation. That puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the hey Prince folks, of Peace, Coleman here. Christ Did Jesus. You know the Ramsey Show is one of the most popular podcasts in the world. Get your daily dose of advice on life and money. Check out all of our shows from the Ramsey Network wherever you listen to podcasts.